What is happening guys, Gary Yaman here, back at it again with a new video. Hope you're doing well, hope you're safe and happy. So in this video, we're gonna talk about this little guy, this Panasonic Lumix G100. And I have to say guys, consider this video as a warning. All right, so let's jump in right into this video. Of course, we're gonna divide this video in several sections. So let's talk about the first section and that is the most boring one. That is all about the specs, the build quality and just how it feels in the hand and stuff. All right, so quickly some of the specs that you can see on the screen. Of course, if you need to have the full specs, just go to the Panasonic website. I will drop the link down in the description as well. This is a very small compact camera with a micro four third sensor. 20 megapixels, a fully articulating screen, and it just weighs in 352 grams. That is just the body, by the way. It is a very lightweight, compact body, and you can easily carry it around with for a full day, and even put it in your pocket if you need it, as you can see here. When you have it in the hand, it actually feels pretty good. It does feel quite plasticky, I have to say. It doesn't feel very premium at all, but in general, it is a nice, tight body that you can just bring with everywhere you want and everywhere you need to go. The micro four third sensor, this is something that I don't really like or enjoy as much as a APS-C or a full frame uh, sensor. It just my type of photography doesn't really suit well with micro four thirds, especially with this little kit lens where you need a lot of light to get a decent image. More about the image quality later, of course. But what do we have, right? At the top, we got like the on and off switch, a big red button to record your videos, the shutter button, of course, and all those, and the big mode dial, of course. Uh, also, we got the flash. The flash isn't that useful because it can only like straightforward flash something or fill in some light. Um, but then you get this effect where you just blind people like in Men in Black, you know. You cannot like point it upwards so that you can maybe uh, use the ceiling as a fill flash type of effect. But this is just straightforward and blind people effect. At the left side we got, we got the microphone input. And at the right side we got the micro HDMI and the old type of USB. At the back we got the fully articulating screen that I actually really like because it is a nice nice touch screen as well. It works really well. Don't expect the highest quality, but it works and I like how it looks. And then we got the viewfinder, of course, that is quite okay for this price point. At the bottom, we got the tripod mount. And when you open up this little compartment, this little door, it doesn't fully cover the tripod mount because then if it was supposed to cover it all, then you have to remove the entire camera just to switch batteries or the SD card slot that you will find there in this compartment. The battery life is actually pretty well, pretty decent for this small type of battery for a full afternoon, I would say, by doing a full-time photography and just filming around the stuff. But make sure for a full entire day, from morning to evening, just bring at least two uh, batteries with you. I think that's about it in terms of build quality specs and handling of this camera. The buttons feel really nice and they, they don't feel really cheap. For this price point, I would say it has a nice feeling and also quite a, a okay grip, I would say. All right, so let's talk about now about more interesting stuff, more exciting stuff, and that is the image quality for both photo and video, by the way, because this camera, even though it is targeted or marketed as a vlogging camera, you can still do some pretty cool photography with it as well. Just don't expect the highest quality out there, right? So let's talk about photos first. As you see here, I'm gonna give you some examples, and those examples, they look really nice, I have to say. Uh, with some tweaking, with some editing, you can have some good results, especially in good daylight conditions or good lighting conditions in general, you can get some good results. And even when you are like in total control with the light and the camera and everything and the subject as well, you can get some good results such as you see right now, right? So image quality wise for photo, it is really good in good lighting conditions, but in not so good lighting conditions, the ISO 
you have to bump up the ISO a little bit more and you have to maybe slow down the shutter speed, then you still get some grainy and noisy results as you see here, right? So that is something that I don't really like, especially with this kit lens as well. Just the graininess of the pictures, it's, it feels, it looks like it's worse than from a, from a smartphone camera. That is something you have to take care of and in order to avoid this, Either you have to spend money in software, like that you can remove all those uh, noise and grain, or you can invest in a nicer lens instead of this kit lens, or you can also get better results, right? So that's something you have to keep in mind. Just with this kit lens, this might not be the best lens in the world. Make sure to invest in a nice prime lens or a zoom lens with a faster aperture. And yes, you can use the flash, but as I mentioned before, the flash is just straightforward, full blown. It doesn't have a nice impact on your photos but maybe if you like the look out of it you can still enjoy it i think it is marketed as a vlogging camera so i would expect to have some good video results i'm gonna stop talking right now and just show you my results and then we can discuss about it after those examples Smells good. All right, this right here is straight out of the camera, 4K, 25 frames per second, ISO 200, and in controlled lighting conditions. Um, also shot in Cine D, CNET. So a little bit more flatter profile, uh, I guess. And the microphone straight out of the camera as well. So let me know what you think about this. I think on a little screen, it actually looks pretty good. Um, I'm not sure in real life, but looking at these stuff, it actually looks pretty good. All right, so as you can see, we got a little mic on top and we'll see how this feels like, how it actually looks like or not what it looks like, but I think it might be sounding pretty good. I don't have to talk that loud before it will limit it, reach the limit, but for now, I think it looks pretty good. 
Right, face tracking is working pretty good as well. This is Cine V. Looks very contrasty, like, like I'm in a tropical environment or something. Hmm. I think I like Cine D the most. And we also got this black and white monochrome stuff. I, I never use this. It's... And this is the natural look. The natural look looks actually pretty fine, like more saturated. So maybe we can tweak this a little bit, but straight out of camera, it actually looks pretty good. Okay, I just wanted to show you the normal straight out of camera look. What do you think about this look in a controlled environment? I think it's a little bit too, too dark or something. I don't know, it's too contrasty. And now we got the vivid mode. I think that's it's a little bit too saturated, I think, at the little screen. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. And you can also shoot in V-Log, but I don't know if people want to use V-Log. The ISO will go up to 400. So you better use a ND filter or something. But you know, I don't like to tweak it. Let's tweak the colors a little bit right now. Hmm. I don't know. I think I'll stick with Cine D. Hand holding the Panasonic Lumix G100. How does it look compared to the iPhone 14 Pro Max? And now on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, how does this compare to the Panasonic Lumix G100? All right, I hope you enjoyed those examples. And I have to say, right, it is looking from the, like this small compact body and just this skit lens, the sound quality and the image quality, it looks actually pretty good, especially with the uh, with the colors that I chosen from the camera itself, like the, the Cine profile, I believe it's called. It looks pretty good, right? Not very saturated, it's like very organic, natural type of feeling. And that is something that I really like. But there's just one thing that you see in those examples that the autofocus is not reliable. The autofocus is hunting quite a lot. Even though when you fix it on the face, like you, you set it on face priority, maybe because my glasses or my hat or my cap, whatever you want to call it, a lot of times it just hunts. And I don't know why, but this is definitely a deal breaker for me. If you are a single operator in this little studio, for instance, you want to have a reliable source or reliable autofocus so that you know that after you're done with all this effort with creating this video, the video is at least in focus, right? And I think for a lot of people, because as I mentioned, you know, you just want to have your, your videos in focus. But the good thing is that if it is in focus, it looks good, right? So that's that. If I ask myself the question, do I recommend this camera? And the answer is a big no. As I mentioned, you know, the photos and the videos, they look good, they look great. But in terms of autofocus and reliability in that autofocus area, this is definitely not something that I can recommend. This is certainly a deal breaker. And as I mentioned in the beginning, this is a warning for you out there that are interested in this camera. Just keep in mind that the autofocus may lose you. With that being said, there are some alternatives such as for ones from Canon or Sony with, with more reliable autofocus and also for the same price point. So I would check those ones or get the newer Panasonic cameras. I believe they do have more reliable autofocus, but then the price will be much higher than from this Lumix G100. All right, guys, I think that's about it for this video. Thank you again for watching. Subscribe to the channel if not already. Like the video and comment down below. If you got any questions, just let me know in the comment section. And I think I'll be seeing you in the next one. As always, stay safe, stay healthy. Good luck.